I'm going to be demonstrating Windsor and Newton pigment markers on this peacock drawing. I love these markers because you can make them look super blended, something that's very much like an oil painting, or you can leave them to where they're a little bit more stylized, you get more of, you can get kind of a cartoony look like I did on parts of this one. They're just so flexible. There are so many things that you can do with these markers, which I love because I was never a huge marker fan myself, like Copics and I, we didn't have a healthy relationship. It was actually a very short-lived relationship. I never even committed to buying any. I just used them and then sent them on their way. I'm a horrible art user. But these markers I really like because I'm able to get a more painted look with them that I just could not make other markers do. I'm using Yupo paper for this. I've worked on the 300 and the 140 pound Yupo papers. They're both fine. Honestly, at this point, after using both, I recommend the 140 pound because it is way cheaper, like way cheaper than the 300 pound Yupo. I don't know that you need that heavy of a paper for this. I have had people ask how long these markers last. I've not had to replace any of mine so far. It, I've completed, I wanna say about five pieces and they still are going strong. I don't have a single color that I feel is running out. So that's pretty encouraging to me. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you now so make sure to head over and check that out if you are unfamiliar with patreon every week you get a new one to two hour long tutorial and also access to over 150 of my past tutorials for as little as four dollars a month if you're unsure if this is something that's really interesting to you and you want to just check out what videos i have available i will put a link to my video library below in the video description now let's move on to this demonstration this part is going to go extra fast because it was a part of the live stream so you can watch this section in real time. Now usually with these markers I do a lot of blending. I'm going to save that for the very end. I'm actually not going to do a whole lot of blending with these. One of the things that is so fun with these and especially when you work on the Yupo paper like I'm doing here, they reactivate. So if you have an area where you realize, oh, I, I maybe I do want to go back and blend that, you can easily. It all gets reactivated with either water or you can use the blending markers. They have a colorless blender and a white blender. The white isn't what you would expect with a white marker. It doesn't actually come out white. It just slightly, very slightly lightens the color that you're mixing. So that's not, that is one thing I wish that I had a good white marker to go on top for highlights, but you can wipe off areas that you do want lightened up. With this one, I'm starting out by just blocking stuff in. It's almost paint by number style, put the right color in the right place or close to the right color. Um, these markers, you can mix a lot. So you don't have to have every color available. I went pretty crazy. When Windsor & Newton originally sent me a set of, I wanna say it was about 24, four markers and then they sent me a few others after I liked them. I actually went and purchased myself so many other colors. I now have over a hundred. I got a little addicted. They're really that fun. But the nice thing is even if you have a smaller set, you can blend and mix a lot though because they do reactivate in a way that you really don't see with most other markers. And I think that's what I like so much about them. I feel almost like I'm working with oil paints. It would be all wet and wet with oils, but it does have that feel the way that you're able to smudge and reactivate, which I'll show you later on towards the end of the video where I blur out a lot of this. And you can use these techniques on any reference photo that you get. Um, Pixabay has tons of them. I, This one I think I got from wildlife reference photos. I'll, I'll put a link in the description to wherever I got this reference photo. But you can use these techniques on any photo you want if you don't want to purchase the same photo to use. And this is a really good project, I think, with these markers if you're new to them, because the way that I'm going to blend, it's not as, um, I guess, technical. I'm not going to do as much blending as I've done on some of my past projects. So it's, it's a nice little introduction to blending. The rest of this, you can see, I'm pretty much just putting color where I'm seeing on my reference photo. And you can see the finished painting there, how I'm going to blur out the right-hand side of everything. And going back through here, and I can take, again, that colorless blender. I can blend with that alone. Or I can take a Q-tip with some water, a paintbrush with some water. When you work on the Yupo paper like I'm doing here, it will always reactivate. So it will always be able to blend anything, no matter how long it's sat. So you will want to put this behind glass to protect it from any water getting on it when it's finished and getting ruined. Don't want someone making or spilling or anything like that because it, it will pull back up. 
they do make the Winsor & Newton pigment marker paper. I'm not a fan. It's way too lightweight. I think it's 20 pounds. It's like working on tissue paper. So I use that if I'm going to do a little practice or if I want to test what happens with two colors because I don't want to do that on my Yupo paper, which is way more expensive. But as far as like a finished project, I'm, I don't use the Winsor & Newton pigment marker paper for that. It, just, it warps really bad. Now I drew everything out with a regular graphite pencil and you can still see my lines through this. So I just blocked everything in with my gold green, whatever color we want to call that. Now I'm lining all of these feathers out and these markers have two ends on them. One is a much thicker end and then the other one is the smaller one that you see me using here. If you are new to using markers, make sure you store these lying flat. You do not want to store them like up in a cup where they're sitting upright. Never do that because the, the way that the ink will run from one end to the other or the pigment, make sure they are kept flat. Very, very important. And this is fun because I feel like you get to experiment a lot and if you don't like how something looks, wipe it off. Not a big deal. You can just take a old rag or something like that in water and it just wipes off clean anywhere that you don't like. So if you want to redo an area, it it is very forgiving. And you're going to see me do that when I get onto the neck. I wasn't really thrilled with the first way it came out or how it looked at first. And so I went back through and lifted some of that off. And it's, like I said, very forgiving. So if you're like me and you're not really experienced with markers, these are kind of hard to permanently mess anything up. Starting to build up some of that contrast in there. Going a bit darker and darker. And if you don't have the exact color that your reference photo calls for, it's not a big deal. What you want to focus on, get your values right. Get your darks dark enough, your lights light enough. That matters so much more. So don't be discouraged. No matter what medium you're working in, if you don't have every single color available to you, just get the worry about your values. That really is what matters the most. You can see this is where I really start darkening things up. Now here, I'm not going for photorealism at all. I am, I'm definitely going with a more stylized look, and you'll see that when I outline his head later on. So just blocking in some of these colors here, these, this light aqua color. And when I work on smaller areas, if I do something that I hate, that's where I use a Q-tip with a bit of water. Just to, I basically use it like an eraser. Throwing in those darks. And this is where I started realizing as I started blocking in the head that it just was not standing out enough from the background. So that's where I'm going. You'll see me keep changing things to figure out how do I make this work? You saw I just stuck my pinky finger in some of that with the eye just to smudge it. So the, the contrast or the, the shading, the val words, they're hard. The transition, that's the word I'm looking for. The transition between that lighter gray and the dark wasn't quite so harsh. And these are really interesting too because they can end up, depending on how much ink is in them, or even if you're using the colorless blender, you can make it so that it's so the pigment is so wet that you can like you can see on the neck there i'm pointing at my computer screen you can't even see that but where i'm pointing that you can't see the transition between that that cooler blue and the warm blue see how it almost looks like a watercolor if you get a lot of the pigment again that was you can do it sometimes the markers seem to have more pigment or more more fluid in it i don't know how to word it and if that if they don't just adding the colorless blender will give you that look and you can have it to, sort of run together like that adding water will also do the same thing Make sure with these markers that if you, uh, the, another tip, if you are like me and not used to working in markers, get those lids on all the way. It's so easy to have them half on and then the marker dry up all the way, which would really suck. They're not inexpensive. So do check your caps constantly as you're working with them. And these are great because they are light fast, which is a really big deal with markers. They're the only marker that you're going to use for art that you can create archival work that you can sell and it's not going to fade. So really, really nice there. These are really fun to work with too because you lay down color so quickly. The majority of this was done in a single evening. Again, getting that contrast in there, getting those darks dark enough. Going over some of the black with purple so that it's not just a flat black there.
and I'm just going to slowly build up. I keep reference going back to that reference photo and just find a little detail and basically copy what you see. And I know that seems too basic. People are like, well, obviously, but that's really what it is. When you want to get a lot of detail in something, really look closely and copy what you see. Look at everything as an abstract shape, not as a peacock's head. Because if you do that, it has a tendency, you get to the point where it, it, your brain starts trying to take over and thinking, I know what a bird's head looks like. I don't need, I don't need to look at that reference photo. Turn it upside down if you need to. Whatever you need to do to trick your brain into seeing things as abstract shapes. I'm just going to shade over all of that. You can still see my graphite lines through there, which I wanted. I didn't want to have to redraw all that back in. This is where I really honestly, I don't know what I was doing here. I'm just experimenting, seeing how to, how, what colors are going to work best. If I don't like it, again, just wipe it off. This was a failed look here. I actually really didn't like how this part came out. So I'm going to end up blurring all of this out. It didn't mess anything up though. It actually works fine to that end, the end result that I'm going for. But it's just, everything has almost the same amount of detail at this point. And this is what I didn't like about it, is the neck, the tail, everything, the head, the face, everything is the same amount of detail and that wasn't working. So I'm using the larger end of the marker there, trying something a little different. And you can really see here where that, that marker has so much pigment in it and it kind of bleeds out into the color next to it, which gave me that nice, looser paint, painterly look. There's some more darks in there working on that contrast. Uh, that green doesn't work at all. No big deal. That is an easy fix. Decided to come back through and try to lighten it up. That didn't work either. He's really just blending in too much. There is that white marker. So you can see it lightens it up a little, but not that much. So this is the point where, I mean, everything's mostly in there. I've now got to figure out what do I need to do for my artwork to make it look better. It doesn't have to look exactly like the reference photo. Obviously, I'm not going for photorealism in this one, but I need to figure out how to, what would make mine look better. So I'm taking a marker or a Q-tip with some water and a Q-tip, another word, if you're not in the U.S., it's a name brand that we use here. It's a cotton swab, but I'm using water and I'm wiping some of this off and look how I can get these highlights in here, I'm pulling the white of the paper back in. And I'm really liking that look way better. But I'm still not totally in love. I mean, he, he's the, the, my values throughout this are too similar. And one of, you have several ways that you can create a little bit more dimension in your work. One is how much detail. So like blurring out the background, which is what I'm going to do in this case. One is, or, you know, having more detail with, with the, where my focus is and then blurring out the area next to it. Another way would be your values, having your darks and your lights, having a lot of contrast there. Another would be with the colors. Problem with mine at this point is, everything's pretty much the same. My values are all kind of the same. My, my contrast, it's all kind of even throughout the whole piece. So now I'm going to take a black marker and look at how I can separate this. Now this is not, if you're going for realism, you're not going to want to outline anything, but I'm not here. I want that nice stylized look so I can outline the marker and that definitely helped. But he was still, when I would stand away from this, I thought I was mostly done and I'd back away from this and think, you know, he's still just being lost in the tail. So what can I do to change that? Well, this is easy and it's a really easy fix to do with these, or change I should say, to do with these markers on this paper. I'm going to blend all that out with water. And I don't even think I turned my camera on for most of that because I thought it was done and put the camera away. So some of it I think I've got on camera, but I smudged it out. I'm using an e.l.f. makeup brush with water and just smudging that and then dabbing it with a paper towel. And I kept doing that over and over and over. Here I'm just taking water, adding the water, and then smudging that all out, making a mess. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? I redo, like if I liked how it looked better the other way, just redo it. It doesn't hurt anything. It's not going to be a challenge to do. I could just wipe the rest of this marker off the paper. This is what I love, love about these markers is the way that you can blend things out like this. And now look how his head stands out so much, whereas before it was getting lost because I had the same amount of detail on the, the tail feathers as I did in his face, and they were all mostly the same colors. And this made such a difference. And this, all I have on that brush is water. And I can keep doing that as much as I want. And I can go back on top of it with marker again. So it's not like once you blend out with water, you can't go on top or change things. You absolutely can.
defining the, that line a bit better, cleaning that up since I erased a bit of it when I was smudging things out. And there is my final drawing. This was a really quick piece. It was done in a single night. And that's one of my favorite things about working with these markers. I work with mediums that like colored pencil that are so slow, so time consuming. So it's really fun just to do a quick piece, bold, bright colors. If you have not tried these markers, I do recommend picking up a set. And just for transparency, Windsor & Newton did provide me with, I forget how many colors. I want to say it was like 24 and then a few others. But most of the ones in this set, I went out and bought myself because I had so much fun with them. I bought tons of extra. So I don't want you guys to think I'm like trying to push them on you or I get, it. it's not a sponsored video basically, but I do want to throw that out there. If you have tried these colors or these these colors these markers tag me in on your work if you're on instagram or any social media i would love to see the work that you've created with them one of the things that is so fun to me about this medium is that it's so fast you can get something done so quickly and with so much pigment when i did the live stream i just did a portion of the tail and that was in like two hours while i was chatting with everybody so i always work really slow for that but then when i sat down to finish it it wasn't even thinking i wasn't even thinking i was going to finish it i was just going to work on a small section i thought maybe i'll just get the background portion done and then i'll work on the head separately it went so quick. I just finished the whole thing really quickly. I mean, it only took a few hours, two hours, three, I don't know. I don't, I don't time it. But the point is, it didn't take very long. So if you like to get things done really quickly, but still have a ton of pigment, this is definitely a good medium for that. I want to do a landscape with these soon because I think that I'm going to get some really cool results for clouded skies, stuff like that. I'm actually really excited to do some more projects with these. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's Roundhouse and Rogero going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all my new art videos every single week.